Welcome to the second video in the Polaroid SX70 series. Uh, in this video we're going to look a little bit more, we looked in the first video at what these things are and talked a little bit about the history of them. In this video we're going to look a little bit more at the nuts and bolts of how to use this camera. So I've switched from my Model 2 over to my uh, Sonar One Touch. And first thing I'm going to do is load film. Now like I said in the first video, I'm out of film. I have some more on the way. Uh, but at 25 bucks for, for an 8-pack of film, it's a luxury item for sure. So this is an empty case. I'm just going to slide it into the film uh, reservoir. Now if this were a brand new case, it would have 8, p eight sheets of film. Uh, I'm assuming, of course, you're not using the old film, but the stuff that's being produced now, which comes with eight sheets in it, and then a black cover on top of it. And when you close this, it's going to spit the black cover out. There's no black cover, so there's nothing for it to spit out. Now, this has the Sonar One Touch system on it, which is this unit. And it's an autofocus unit, but unlike modern SLRs that use a uh, Auto, the light coming through the lens to do the autofocus. This uses a, an ultrasound a sound being emitted by the speaker in front of it. So it emits the ultrasound here, bounces off the object, comes back, and that's how it calculates the uh, uh, distance and the focus. And all you have to do is just barely touch the shutter and it starts focusing. And then when you click the shutter the whole way, it takes the picture and ejects the film. Now one of the reasons that this camera is working right now with the empty film pack in it is that the film pack, we'll take a look at that here, has a battery built into it. So those are the battery contacts, those little silver circles on the bottom of the film pack. And uh, it, it has enough charge in it to, to ensure that even if you only take one photo every few months or a year, that the battery is the battery's going to stay charged. It uses the battery is a six volt flat type uh, zinc chloride battery, and it's that type of battery because that's the only thing capable of providing the pulse demand required by these by these cameras in order to function properly. The, um, uh, the, the battery powers everything on the camera. The sonar system, the flash if it has one, the flash bar uses M-type M flash port uh, bulbs, and the flash sync speed if you're using an electronic flash is 1 75th of a second. But because this has a leaf shutter on it instead of a focal plane shutter, the timing is different. And so you would, if you want to use a standard electronic flash, you have to modify your camera. And it's an easy enough thing to do if you're competent at that, which I'm not, uh, to open up the camera, look for a couple of copper contacts that are moving back and forth when the shutter opens, and then just, I think, bend them or change, <laughs> change. Uh, anyway, it's, there's some inst in instructions on how to do that on the internet if you are so inclined. Um, it's beyond the scope of this video, and uh, I personally would not do it, nor recommend someone do it unless they know what they're doing. The, uh, so it has two flash ports, the M for the bar, and then the X uh, electronic flash ports on the side. And uh, so the next thing to do to look at is how to hold this camera, because it's a little bit tricky. If you hold it like this, like, and this feels comfortable, well, when you take a picture, that's going to drop down and a picture's going to shoot out and it's going to get jammed into your finger or could jam in the mechanism and that's a problem. So you have to hold it like this. You also want to make sure when you're holding it that your finger's not in front of the flash bar if you have it, which, yeah, or in front of the, the um, one-touch system, or in front of the lens, which you'd be able to see because it's an SLR. And you also have to make sure that you're not pressing in on the bellows when you're holding it. So you have to hold it basically with your, your three fingers underneath it on each side like this and this, your right index finger on the shutter trigger, your left index finger providing support up at the front, and then your thumbs like that. So it's not the most comfortable camera to hold. 
uh, ever invented. But it is compact when expanded and can be used for a number of different situations. I have a link below in each of these videos to a, an 11 minute um, very detailed and informative video that Polaroid produced uh, for advertising these cameras. And it's from the 70s, so it's back when advertisers did things like provide actual information in their commercials. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to grab my, um, my macro lens and we'll take a look through the two shutters quickly so you can see the differences. And then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. And when I have photos of these, uh, well, I'm going to do a separate photo. I'm going to do, uh, I'm sorry, two separate videos for these. I'm going to do a video on loading and unloading the film. And I'm also going to do a video on how to do uh, SX70 print manipulation uh, in, an up, uh, in, the, in the next few months. And that should be a fun one, so keep an eye out for that. And if you want to be notified of that, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and you'll get to see a notification when that one comes out. All right, so we're looking through the Model 2. That's the white and brown one. You can see the split prism there in the middle. And I can't quite focus on the other camera. It's just a little bit too close. But you get the idea of approximately how it works. You can see around the split prism the whole image going blurry on the focusing screen. And then getting more in focus as it comes together. And then if I could get it that last little bit in focus, it would be just fine. But that's the split prism focusing system. Put this down here in its place. I'm going to pop open the Sonar One Touch model. And there you can see the autofocus working. It is pretty darn cool. And that's what it looks like when it takes a picture. It goes dark for a moment. And in the first video, I explained how the mirrors work in, in these. Uh, so if you're interested, you can see that. But it goes dark for a moment and then ejects the, cam the, the picture if you're actually taking one. So if this video was helpful to you, please give me a, uh, a thumbs up because that lets me know I'm on the right track. If uh, you have any comments or questions, please leave those below and I'll respond to them. I'm pretty good about responding to them quickly. If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, let me know. And if I have the equipment and technical knowledge to do it, I'd be more than happy to film that for you. Uh, and uh, also, you can subscribe to the channel below and you'll know when I have, some, uh, have additional videos coming out, including the two that I talked about that we're going to do for these in the coming months. And lastly, thank you guys for watching.